Here on CRN, we'd like to keep you updated on what's happening in wine throughout the state of California, Napa, Sonoma, the Pacific Coast has great regions like the Central Coast area, Paso Robles, Santa Barbara, Temecula. Join our very own Larry Van Alst as he takes a look at what's cooking on wine, the Sonoma Report. It comes your way Wednesday evenings at 6 p.m. right here on CRN. Winemakers, superstars, wine growers, and more with Larry Van Alst. What's cooking on wine, the Sonoma Report. Live across America, the PM Show with Mike Horn on CRN Digital Talk Radio. Hey, welcome to the Big PM Show, Nationwide Coast to Coast CRN Digital Talk Radio. I'm Michael Horn. Paul Stern joins us. Hello, Paul. Hey, glad to be with you, Mike. What do we got exciting to talk about today? We've got lots of news stories, entertainment stories of the day. We're going to be talking about Bugs Bunny on the show today. Got some news there. Ant-Man doing quite well. Rob Schneider is in the news. Uh, Sad news. You probably heard about Whitney Houston's daughter. We'll report on that. And... uh, uh, I actually tuned in for the very first time to a uh, somebody left my TV tuned to the E channel, and I saw about twenty seconds of Keeping Up with the Kardashians, of which I know now I will never ever watch that show again. Somehow, Chloe Kardashian was uh, trying to do a photo shoot, and she's pregnant, and there was uh, some other the stiff in there, some guy uh, talking about, oh well, you know, you got to be careful because you got to be groomed in that area. And I'm thinking, like, this is the crap that's on TV today. And that's like a number one top show. Am I right? The Keeping Up with the Kardashian show? That is a top program. That is a top program. And I, I mean, they got the spinoff show. The Caitlyn really? Jenner show has been spun off from that. I mean, there's all these shows. Remember Chris Jenner had a talk show. Yeah, that's true. And the, uh, on for the blink of an eye, but it, she did have a talk but show. But there's uh, definitely some things there. So I don't know. Maybe we should just take this show over to the E! Channel and see if we can get something going. Reality TV. TV seems to be uh, still where it's at, although I think the um, the bubble has, uh, you know, waned a little bit, deflated somewhat down from what there used to be. There used to be tons of reality shows, not as many now. Over the weekend, I was watching Soledad O'Brien. Now, what is that? Another Is that a new uh, reality I, show? No, I actually, this is a... Pro- Soledad O'Brien? Is that yeah. a brother to Conan? No, no, this is actually, it gets kind of ridiculous. You know things are pretty bad when you actually watch a program that you've already seen before. One of those, what is Soledad no, no, O'Brien? No, Soledad O'Brien is one of those news anchors that did a documentary. I think it was on CNN on the Jonestown Massacre. They revisited it, I believe, 30 years later. That would be at least 30 years later. And was it a good documentary? It was good. I, it was good, as good the second time as it was the first time. The Jim Jones. I also tuned into uh, Sports Vision in L.A. That's the Dodger channel, which is quite well done. They do produce some good things together. But I noticed Larry King, since he retired from CNN... Larry does interviews on Aura TV, and then he also does a show where they actually prop him up against uh, Lou Brock's locker. I I don't know if it's Lou Brock's locker, but they prop him up against kind of a locker room. There's some kind of smelly T-shirt. There's like uniforms hanging around him, and he interviews baseball greats, and I think he's interviewed so many Dodgers and so many have probably said they don't want to be interviewed by Larry that he's done now a Jimmy Kimmel interview, and I saw Conan O'Brien talking on there. I don't know what that has to do with the Dodgers, but I watched him. I, I actually watched the I, Jimmy Kimmel, and, and you know Larry in his own way and style is an interesting interviewer. And I have to I can't wait to watch the eighteen hundred reruns of the Conan O'Brien interview that'll be on that Dodger channel. I believe over the weekend I also came upon that channel as well. Did I re- you? I, I, I also re- did you rehook up your cable? It's I amazing. Did, I did. I did rehook. I, as soon as I got the squadron out, I called up the cable company, and everything's back and connected. So you can watch, now you can watch Larry King in the locker room. He kind of just sits there. And there is a really good one though. There, Oral Hershiser, Bulldog. There's a lot of, or, he's lot interviewing of Oral Tommy Hershiser. Lasorda. He's interviewing Lasorda about his childhood and stuff. It's great. I love Tommy Lasorda. I, I have, Anything Lasorda I will watch. Over the weekend I had myself captivated over the 1986 National League playoffs where the Dodgers. 88. Were, no, no, th- I think this was 86. The Dodgers lost to the Mets. I tuned in last night to Dodger Vision. They were promoting the 1988 Game 1 of the World Series, Dodgers against Oakland. And I tuned in last night just before going to bed when this guy, Kurt Gibson, came up to bat in the bottom of the ninth inning. I can't believe it. The guy actually hit a home run. (laughs) 
Love the warmth and beauty of hardwood flooring? Then you've got to get to Lumber Liquidator's Hardwood Flooring Sale. For deals on over 200 varieties of hardwood from just 99 cents. You could pay twice as much at other stores, but we've got gorgeous, pre-finished, easy-to-install Chase Oak Hardwood from $189. Stunning, wide plank, solid, three-quarter inch espresso, heavier for $299. Incredible deals on solid bamboo from just $129. Plus, laminate and more from $0.49. Cents. And 24-month special financing. The hardwood flooring sale is going on now. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. Welcome to Staples. Hi, Staples guy. I have to get my kids ready for back to school. Staples has tons of deals, like one subject notebooks for just 25 cents. So they'll be 110% ready. Wait a minute. That's 10% more ready than 100% ready. That's right. Yeah, I was a math major. I could tell. Make low prices happen. Make 110% ready happen. Staples, make more happen. One subject notebooks are just 25 cents each, all season long. Offer valid in store only while supplies last. Limit 30 per customer ends 9-12-15. Welcome back here to the PM Show, Monday edition on CRN Digital Talk Radio. So I do like this, uh, you know, we broadcast from Hollywood, California, and there is a Sportsnet LA that, you know, on all the sports talk stations in town, it's like, you know, you can only get Sportsnet LA if you have Time Warner Cable. Yes, that's the deal. Time Warner Cable and the Dodgers put Sportsnet LA, the deal together, lots of money was spent by Time Warner to get the rights to the Dodgers, and then these idiots that are doing sports talk, I say, well, you know, if they made the games available game by game, I could buy the games I want to see, and then I wouldn't have to see the others. No, no morons. That's not the deal. The deal is Time Warner spent a lot of money to get this rights to the Dodgers, and they've got to make all that money back, so they need the network or the provider, Dish Network, uh, you know, whatever it might be, to spend a lot of money to buy the whole package in order to make their money back. And they're not making their money back, and they're losing their shirt, but it's a pretty good channel. And you were watching uh, the 1986 uh, playoff games. Who was playing in this? Was this, uh, I think it's 88. I think that's the year that, uh, the Mets and the Dodgers played. I think you were looking at the 88s, not 86. No, oh, no, no. I, I'm going to take a, I'm going to do a challenge. 88 playoffs. The this was, this wasn't the, the, the Buckner. This wasn't the, 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 the Buckner. No, no, this wasn't the one where the, the Mookie, was it Mookie? Is it Mookie Wilson? Mookie Wilson. Mookie. This isn't the this isn't the, the kind of the, the prelude, if you will, to then that f- f- famous fall classic. You mean with the Dodgers and uh, the Oakland? That was in no, '88. No, not the Dodgers and Oakland. The, the Mets and Boston. Oh well, then it was a different year. The okay. 80, that was the '86. So the Dodgers must have lost to the Mets in this one. Yeah, I didn't hang with it. Was that '86 really? I think it was. Can we, Tomas? Tomas, look it up and see. All I know is the the Dodgers played the Mets. Uh, one year and uh, they played them 18 times and lost all 18 and then came back and won them in the playoffs. And I'm a lifelong Dodger fan and I actually flipped it off when I saw the Dodgers going down to dastardly defeat. It was a rainy, crappy day in uh, New York at that dump Shea Stadium and uh, somebody was slipping in the outfield and then Mike Sosha hit this home run that brought the Dodgers back into extra innings. They won the game, went on to take that series. It was quite an amazing series. There was the Rick Monday with his big home run against uh, Montreal. I remember that, that, that series. Remember, remember that, that one? I, re- I do remember Mo, that. that was a great one. Mo turning the, you know, doing a job there. And so there are some interesting interviews. I learn a lot about people. I like interviews. And I, and since, uh, Jay Leno was gone from the Tonight Show and Letter, Dave Letterman, nobody really does interviews. They do yuck yuck things with people on there. And there's like new young, um, meteoric, uh, wonderful actors and actresses on, but nobody's getting into their brains to actually figure out what made them tick, how they got into the biz, what's going on. I like to learn about that well, stuff. Well, you know, that Dodger, what is that Dodger channel? What is Sportsnet it? Sport, LA. Sportsnet LA, but they, they do, they do interviews. They do like a, kind of like a Carson style kind of an interview program where they'll get like a bunch of ball players and they'll kind of sit in kind of a semi-circle and yeah, kind that's, of, that, that one they repeat over and over again. That's also about the 88 World Series. They just, they need some new ones. That, that's the one thing I will say about sports in LA. They should, uh, you know, rack up a few new round table discussions. Yeah, I was actually riveted by a discussion. I don't know if you remembered the game, but Ron Say was at bat. 
And he got the Penguin, Ron Say, third baseman for the Dodgers, later on the Cubs. And uh, Ron Say wore one of those batting helmets that did not. Come on, Penguin. Get the, let's get the Penguin up there. Come on, Penguin. His helmet did not have the optional protector. Flap. The, the and he, flap. Got, he got beaned. Did you see that and, one? And, and he got beaned at the head. Yeah. And, and I think he was. That was to, sad, sad, sad. Oh, boy, it's scary moments there for a while because he just laid there. And I believe he was out for a game or two. He was, and he came back, and he's with us today, and he's okay. Am I right, Ron? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I am. I'm sorry. If it's a bad, crummy joke, I will go for it. No, he's okay. He's great. I love the penguin. That was scary moments. You get hit with the – you hear that sickening thud of the ball against there. I mean, ugh, ugh. that's the tough part about uh, baseball. I will say that. They mentioned that there was one player, I think it was Andre Ethier, used to bat with his pinky over the uh, tip of the bat when he would be batting and until he got hit with a pitch and it broke his finger and he was out for a while, so he no longer did that. And, you know, he could deal with it in the regular position. Yeah, one of the things that I never understood in watching baseball was the way that Pete Rose would crowd the plate. Yeah, and he got brushed back. Frank Robinson, probably the famous uh, uh, superstar Frank Robinson, who later had a great managerial career as well, used to really crowd the plate. And guys like Don Dreiser would dust him back. He was the guy that got hit the most was Frank Robinson because he crowded the plate. And pitchers would like to, like, dust him back. They don't do that anymore. They don't do That's it. That's because they throw like nine thousand miles an hour. I mean, it really is dangerous. You crowd, you crowd the plate and get hit by a, a, a ninety-five mile an hour fastball. You're not going to be getting back into the game anytime soon. Well, I was hanging out with our buddy Larry Elder today, and he was talking about throwing out the pitch to a baseball game and how nervous you get. He said that he called his brother, and the first thing his brother said, "Don't bounce the ball and make sure you throw it from the mound." And then all of a sudden, he tried it once and he couldn't get it there, and so he started to practice to make it work. And that's a pretty nerve wracking thing to throw a strike there or to get it right to the catcher. I mean, I'd be throwing over. I'd be looking like Steve Sachs when he couldn't throw to first base there for a while when he was second baseman for the Dodgers. You know, I don't want anybody to look at me the wrong way or anything, but uh... <laughs> there was somebody in our audience that looked. <laughs> Just looked at Paul the wrong way, and you know who you are, so stop it. Go ahead, Paul. But, but you know, with Larry Elder being back as part of the staff here at CRN Digital Talk. I shouldn't do that because people are going to take that picture and it'll be on the internet for years. Tomas is already getting his gang to do it. Yes, what was the story? No, I was going to, I was going to mention that, but now with Larry and you mentioned his uh, pitching prowess, it might be not a bad time to kind of regroup the CRN All Stars. I thought about that. Um, I could play first. I probably would be coach now. I think, I don't know if I could actually. I used to have one of those digger gloves so you could dig them out of the dirt. No, you'd have to throw like, it used to be waist high. Now you'd have to throw like right at my head in self-defense I could catch it. So just high throws at all times right to my head. I would probably catch those, hopefully. If not, a few broken glasses and then we'd go from there. I mean, at the very least, we can go ahead and rough up our friends that over at our sister network, uh, Salem Radio. What was your big position? Where did you play when you were on a, the soft uh, ball I, team for CRM? I, I was a multi-position player. <laughs> so you were the utility man? And, you know, we got the bathroom needs some cleaning up. <laughs> you can still have that position here if you want it, CRN. No, you they, were the utility. So what did you play? You played infield, outfield? I played fast pitch uh, hardball. Uh, Not for CRN. We were always slow pitch. No, no, no. But back in the day, I I, I would play catcher, and that was really it was really adventuresome, because you really never knew if that bat was going to hit you when it, the person kind of took that roundabout yeah, swing. If they're careless or something, yeah. So but you would be catcher, but you kind of had your everything was in the game. I had a catcher's mitt, and I had the uh, you know all the protection, and I would get. Behind. Did you ever get any bruising, like any wild foul balls, <laughs> and hitting an area that they shouldn't hit? Did you ever? Because you know, I was watching a game and Yasmini Grandal, the uh, Dodger catcher, got hit somewhere with it. And then uh, Cynthia was there and she said, what about that guy that got hit in the throat last week? I said, that was him. He was out, he was out for a couple of days. That's tough catching. Oh, You get hit a lot. There's a lot of protective devices, but there's just never seems to be enough. Yeah. I think pro- former professional wrestlers would be good catchers because they get hit a lot. So you just do in there. All right. Anyway, happy birthday to Bugs Bunny. He is turning uh, today uh, 75 years old today. Can you believe that? Today is the day. Bugs Bunny, um, his character was in a, uh, a cartoon short called Wild Hair uh, back uh, 75 years ago. So happy birthday to Bugs. 
And uh, that means Elmer and all those guys maybe are not as old. They might be a few years younger. We'll have to find out. Come to Angelo's and Vinci's Restaurante in Fullerton, California for our sizzling party savings. Book your wedding event or reception, your birthday bash, or a special event of any kind and celebrate at Angelo's and Vinci's. Come to Angelo's and Vinci's and celebrate in one of our many festive banquet rooms. It's an incredible fun event you'll never forget. Food, music, and lots of fun. Call for the details and don't forget our daily lunch and dinners, plus our Sunday champagne brunch, just $14.95. Minestrone soup, sausage and peppers, pastas, chicken dishes, salads, scones and muffins, Plus so much more, a chocolate fondue fountain, Zeppelis, cannolis, fresh fruit, champagne, and Junior will be waiting to make the omelet of your choice from our omelet bar. Angelo's and Vinci's has been voted on the Orange County Hot List as one of the top five Italian restaurants for the past six years. And don't forget our award-winning pizzas. Thin or thick, they're yummy. It's all at Angelo's and Vinci's Restaurante at 550 North Harbor Boulevard in Fullerton, California. Call 714-879-4022. 714-879-4022. What are you going to do with your old car? You can try selling it, you could junk it, or you could donate it to Heritage for the Blind. Your car will be towed away for free, and your donation is tax deductible. Just call 1-800-785-9618. Heritage for the Blind accepts cars, vans, trucks, and boats. It doesn't matter if your vehicle runs or not. It will be towed away for free, and you'll be supporting those that need help. Heritage for the Blind is a non profit organization that helps the visually impaired live fuller lives. Call right now to donate your car and as a special thank you for calling, you'll receive a free 3-day vacation voucher to many exciting locations. Call Heritage for the Blind right now. 1-800-785-9618. Donating is easy and your vehicle is towed away for free. Plus, you'll get a free vacation voucher. Call now 1-800-785-9618. That's 1-800-785-9618. Are you nearing eligibility for Medicare benefits? Then you know now is an important time in your life. Medicare benefits can be a complicated puzzle. You don't want to overpay for your Medicare coverage or get the wrong plan. Let Health Markets Insurance Agency help you. With one free phone call, a licensed insurance agent will help you select a Medicare plan that's right for you and your budget. If you're becoming eligible for Medicare, call today and learn how to get the most out of your benefits. 800-793-1960. 800-793-1960. Health Markets Insurance Agency is the DBA or assumed name of InSphere Insurance Solutions, Inc., which is an authorized insurance agency in all 50 states in the District of Columbia. Not all agents are licensed to sell all products. Service and product availability varies by state. Call 800-793-1960. 800-793-1960. Welcome back here to the PM Show, Monday edition, CRN Digital Talk Radio. I'm Michael Horn along with Paul Stern. So just to kind of give Bugs a little shout out here today. And our research department, thanks to our executive producer, Courtney Cadero, for coming up with this. Apparently, I am incorrect. Porky Pig is uh, older than uh, than Bugs Bunny. Uh, apparently, there was uh, uh, Bugs Bunny was uh, debuting uh, back on this day, the 27th in 1940, and it was called Wild Hair. That was the uh, cartoon. And... Uh, but there had been an earlier variation. There was a wise cracking rabbit who was voiced also by Mel Blanc, who of course created the, the voice for Bugs Bunny in 1938 in Porky's Hair Hunt with Porky Pig. So Porky's a couple years older than Bugs. So, uh, anyway, they had the Looney, you remember the Bugs Bunny, the Warner Brothers, Looney Tunes and Merry Melodies? Sure, Love those sure. as a kid. Very good stuff. Very you good. know, 1940 Wild Hair was the first one where Bugs looked like himself, sounded like himself, and that's where he uttered the words, what's up, Doc? That what's was up, the Doc? first time sure. in that one. Sure. But then there was a bunch of other things in 1949. You may remember this one. I remember like just yesterday as a kid, long haired hair was, uh, uh, Bugs battled some, uh, self-important singer who was, uh, uh, performing, uh, an aria from the Barber of Seville. Remember that? It was at the, uh, the Hollywood Bowl. Yes, uh, I the, believe the, he had a tuxedo. I yes, that exactly one. right. I and then there was, uh, the What's Opera Doc. 
with Bugs and Elmer Fudd and a, uh, a spoof that was uh, selected for the National Film Registry, and they did that one. There was in 1955 Rabbit Rampage. It was a mega tune in which he feuded with an unseen animator. Remember that one? That was a good one, too, that they had. So a lot of good things over there. And, there's just, you know, he battled a lot of uh, – Always battle with Yosemite Sam. Remember Yosemite Sam? I already remember my, my my favorite one. I don't know if you have that one on your list, but remember the the I believe it was the Gossama, the Orange or the Great the Gossama? Tasmanian that, that's Devil. The that's the one. That's the one. The Tasmanian Devil. We have that sound effect somewhere. Jim Marple had that one for years. The Tasmanian Devil, Marvin the Martian, oh, Daffy Duck. Yes. That was another one. Remember yes. that? Anyway, happy birthday to uh, Bugs Bunny. Is, is it? Uh, by the way, is Mel Blanc's son now the current voice? Of I don't know. Bugs Bunny? I think Can we look uh, that one up in the research? Yeah, until Mom's going to jump. I don't in know. I don't know how the, the son takes on over for the dad, but I guess he was around his dad so much that he was able to do it himself. See. No, I don't, think, so, I don't, I don't think Remember that Jack Benny routine with yeah. Mel Blanc as no. the guy with the sombrero on? He say, "Excuse me, sir." He goes, "See." What's your name? Cy. Cy C. Yeah, that wasn't a bug's butt. Do you have a sister? C. What's her name? Sue. Sue C. Yeah. It was great. You got to watch the car- Jack Benny That show. wasn't a cartoon. No, but Mel Blank, one of the all-time greats. Same with Jack Benny. Anyway, uh, very close. Ant-Man uh, given a run for its money by Adam Sandler's new movie, Out Pixels. And, uh, uh, but Paul Rudd as Ant-Man uh, barely won out the box office this last weekend, in case you want to know. Pulled in $24.8 million. And it's now second weekend at the box office. Ant Man, the winner over uh, just because of the last couple of days, twenty four million for Pixels. So uh, that was pretty good. That's twenty four million is uh, a little bit lackluster. They they say though for Adam Sandler because uh, he uh, he had twenty five million for Jack and Jill, only twenty five million in his opening weekend. Grown Ups two pulled in forty million. Uh, final numbers are going to be coming out later on in the week. So um, also around the box office, uh, Jake Gyllenhaal Southpaw was a, a surprise success, pulled in $16.5 million, making it into the, the top five. So uh, congratulations uh, to, to the winners there in the, uh, in the derby there to get into the uh, top five of the um, uh, big movies that are posting there now. Minions was also in there, and so was uh, Paper Towns. That'd be uh, uh, Gyllenhaal Southpaw was number three, Paper Towns four, Minions five. Uh, Rob Schneider has been burglarized. Well, that's too bad. We once saw Rob Schneider up at the auction Napa Valley. Remember that uh, one year? And I don't know if he was a guest auctioneer, but uh, he was there in attendance. He said he was there. Is Noel Noel Blank, is he the voice of Bugs Bunny now? That's great to know that it's in the family. That's good. Thank you, Tomas, for that. Anyway, Rob Schneider's home was burglarized over fr- Friday night, uh, and some um, – the jewelry was taken, nothing as extensive as a rare baseball card, because, you know, he was in that, he was the Deuce Bigelow star. Uh, he was out, uh, he and his wife were out when the thieves broke into the, their home. They made off with his wife's diamond engagement ring, a Cartier watch, and some other expenses. That's a shame. Anyway, the biggest uh, ticket item was a mint condition 1951 uh, Bowman Willie Mays rookie card valued at $175,000. Wow, I didn't realize that uh, Rob Schneider collects old baseball cards. I would, I love those, especially from the fifties and sixties. I would go into the seventies as well. I used to have a collection, and my mom threw them all out when she cleaned it. I to have, this day, it still irks me that she threw yeah. them out. I threw away all my baseball cards. Actually, actually, I didn't throw them away. I actually sold them, and then uh, I actually then. Recently, I went ahead and repurchased them. Just, uh, you repurchased them? No, a complete set from 19, I think, the 1975 Cincinnati Red. No, the 1975 complete set, the whole set. That was a loser team. Uh, anyway, the Thieves also made off with a 1953 Willie Mays Tops and a 71 card as well. Uh, they were separate from Rob's main collection. This is all reported to us from TMZ. Sorry to hear about that, uh, Rob Schneider. This is Larry Elder with an Elder Minute on the Cosby Accusers and the media indifference about a Clinton accuser right after this. Listen to the Larry Elder Radio Show. Just dial pound 250 and when prompted, say CRN Talk. The CRN app will be text message to your phone. Call pound 250 and say CRN Talk. 35 women who have accused Bill Cosby of rape and sexual abuse appear on the current cover of New York Magazine. Most never told authorities and the statute of limitations for criminal charges against Cosby have long expired. The media regard these accusers as victim survivors, courageous heroines for coming forward. But why have the media shown so little interest in the allegations of Juanita Broderick, who 
Roger claims Bill Clinton, then Arkansas Attorney General, raped her. She further alleges that Hillary Clinton, two weeks later, told her, not in these exact words, that she'd better keep quiet or else. Bill Cosby is not president, and his wife is not running to become president. Bill Clinton was, and his wife hopes to be. I'm Larry Elder, and this has been an Elder Minute. Have you ever considered adding a home security system but thought it would be too expensive? Here's the good news. There's never been a more affordable time to help protect your home, valuables, and your loved ones. You can now get a $100 Visa card from Protect Your Home, your authorized ADT dealer, with the installation of a new ADT-monitored system. Here's even better news. Your new system, worth $850, is free. You pay just a $99 installation charge and purchase monthly monitoring for less than $2 a day. Call Protect Your Home today at one 1-8- 8 6-6-6-6-9-8-9-54. That's 1-866-669-8954. Get the peace of mind that comes with owning an ADT monitored system plus a $100 Visa card from Protect Your Home. Call now 1-866-669-8954. That's 1-866-669-8954. 36 month monitoring contract required. General terms and conditions apply. Visit protectyourhome.com forward slash terms. Hi, I'm Joan London, and if you're worried about your parent or a loved one living alone like I was, and you want reliable senior care information, then call A Place for Mom, the nation's largest senior living referral service. You'll get free information on assisted living, Alzheimer's care, nursing homes, even important financial information. They had obviously researched every place, not just given me names. They found me a place for which she could afford, and it was magnificent. We're now... Very confident that she's safe, and they just helped every step of the way, and I can't thank them enough. So if you're struggling to find reliable senior living information, call a place for mom. This is a free service, and you can trust them to help you. If you're struggling to find reliable senior living information for your mom or dad, then call or go online to get the free help you need during this turbulent time. Call now, 800-471-5173, 800-471-5173. Staples BTS Radio 2015, in-store, even out, 726, 30 seconds. QSRA 5036000. Welcome to Staples. Hi, Staples guy. I need to get my kids ready for back to school. Well, Staples has everything they need at low prices, like comp books for just 50 cents, so they'll be 110% ready. Wait, that's 10% more ready than totally ready. Yep. That extra 10% evens it all out. Sorry? Well, I'm usually 10 minutes late getting them to school, so. Uh, that doesn't even it out. Yeah, sure it does. Make low prices happen. Make 110% ready happen. Staples, make more happen. One subject notebooks are just 25 cents each, all season long. Offer valid in-store only while supplies last limit 30 per customer ends 9 12 15. Hello, CRN listeners. This is Michael Horn, inviting you to join me and my co-host, Sommier Nicole Nielsen from Roos Chris Steakhouse as we present What's Cooking on Wine. Find out about the latest trends in wine, great food, spirits, and a whole lot more. It's What's Cooking on Wine, done live at 6 o'clock Monday nights at Roos Chris Steakhouse in Pasadena, California, and then the replays throughout the weekend right here on CRN. So if you love wine and you love great food, it's What's Cooking on Wine right here on CRN. PM Show Nationwide Coast to Coast. CRN Digital Talk Radio. You can always join us on the web at crntalk.com. We're streaming a video there from the CRN studio. Also on Roku. If you get one of those great Roku boxes, Anywhere they sell them, uh, Target, Radio Shack, uh, Best, Costco. Best, Best Buy. Buy. Yeah, get a Roku box and uh, search for CRN. You get all eight of our audio channels, and you get the, the CRN One channel. has great video. You can see all the lighting on Paul's. Uh, where is that light coming from on there? I think they're all just too high or something. I don't know. There just uh, seems to be a problem with lights here. But uh, tune in and check it out. See if uh, I'm correct or not. Sad uh, note in the news. Uh, Whitney Houston and Bobby Brown's daughter, uh, Bobby Christina, died. You know, she was in that coma forever. Uh, at the age of 22, she passed away outside Atlanta in a hospice care facility. She'd been there since uh, June 24th and uh, was injured and uh, uh, was uh, anyway. It was just uh, drugs, I whatever. Know. I, don't, I yeah. don't even know. She uh, she had uh, she battled um, 
Uh, she had drugs or whatever, and uh, the, the lost oxygen for a while, and it's just she was in a had terrible deal, way. Then had to deal with, of course, her mother, respirator. And, her, and her mother's passing. That's what did it, I'm sure. Well, something. Who knows? But anyway, uh, the paramedics were able to resuscitate her, but she was uh, officially uh, induced coma, placed on life support, and, and now has passed away. So sad uh, no, uh, note in the news. And, and the end of a very sad chapter. Now, here comes the big uh, battle of it, though, because uh, Bobby Christina was set to inherit at least $20 million when her mom, Whitney Houston, died. But there were strings attached, and it looks like most of that fortune is going to be uh, uh, determined by Whitney's wish, uh, wishes, not by uh, Bobby Christina, who's passed away now. And there's a copy of Whitney's will and an established trust in which uh, Bobby Christina got one-tenth of Whitney's estate when she turned 21. Bobby Christina was set to get one-sixth of the balance when she turned 25. That's not going to happen since she passed away. And uh, Whitney's will provided that if Bobby Christina died before reaching 25, all the money would go to people that uh, Whitney designed. Oh, my gosh. So um, anyway, it's, uh, I don't want to hear about this stuff. Yeah, but this is it's way, crazy. way People's too personal wishes. and unfortunate. It's sad. Let's get to something positive in the news like Snoop Dogg arrested in Sweden. Did you hear about this? Yeah, Tomas is shaking his head now on this. Cops claim drugs, but uh, Snoop Dogg says profiling. So you got this battle going on now. Snoop Dogg finds himself in an international legal hot water on this one. Now, police in Uppsala, Sweden, uh, pulled his car over on Saturday. After he finished his concert in the city, they arrested and, and booked him, alleging he was driving under the influence of narcotics. According to police, the captain there, David Nilsson, was that the, the same Nilsson that's saying everybody's talking? No, no. Anyway, uh, Daniel Nielsen, I'm sorry. The incident sounded pretty simple from the perspective. He said police carrying out roadside controls noticed Snoop Dogg, whose car was pulled over, seemed to be under the influence of narcotics. He was arrested, taken to the police station to take a urine test. Snoop, however, apparently contends the arrest was racial profiling in that incident. He did nothing wrong. He even alleges that the urine test quickly came back clean. He's since been released, so he may be in the clear, at least regarding the drug accusation, and uh, we'll keep you updated on the story. That's pretty interesting. The urine and test came back clean. Yeah. Then so maybe Snoop Dogg I, is right. You I, know, Snoop Dogg always looks like he's in a stupor anyway, doesn't he? I mean, come on. His demeanor is like he's uh, loaded at all times. Well, that's the that's the uh, the image. That's the kind of the impression that I think he yeah. wishes to create. I think he appears on a talk show. He even did that thing, what was it, with the Martha Stewart. He even got her kind of hammered it up with him. Talking about brownies they were preparing together on the program and stuff like that. Well, you know, let's uh, We'll see what happens. We'll keep it posted on what's going on. Now, there's some news of the weird that we have to report on this. And this Too is bad they really didn't lock strange. him up and just throw away the key. Just teach Aren't him you a Snoop Dogg fan? Don't you like him? I don't know. I don't know, if I'm, I don't know if I'm necessarily a fan of his. I, I think as a personality, I think he's kind of entertaining, but I don't know if I've actually ever seen him. Tomas, you're kind of the music man there, you know, mostly eclectic. He's all right, isn't he, Snoop Dogg? Yeah, I think so, too. All right, so here's something really weird. There's a new a – probable. Uh, this is weird. This is a um, – a new urine-proof paint that uh, apparently is out Let now. Let me get out a pen because I can use some of this stuff. This is uh, when it's a hot, sticky summer in the America's uh, cities across America. You know, the smell sometimes in some of the uh, bad areas can be all too familiar. Oh. So San Francisco is in the news a lot lately, and they are uh, uh, looking at the uh, looking at these uh, public urinators by painting their walls with UV-coated urine-repellent paint. Now, this was a story, it's not just me, that was carried on KPIX reports in uh, San Francisco. The paint is so hydrophobic that it uh, keeps the wall clean and sprays urine right back at the offenders. I don't know. That's Wait, what it's like. He says... I, I thought this was a pet product for, like, like no, a, the critter. No, but this would be good for your critters, for your dog that, at your what, house. That, that's what I was thinking, but did I have got an issue with my, 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 my unfortunately, my, my puppy urinating. This would be what you might want to go for. They say they're piloting to see if they can discourage people from uh, peeing at uh, many of the hot spots in San Francisco. That's at least what uh, Mohammed Nuru told uh, uh, the, uh, the the reporters here, if he's the public works director, he said, nobody wants to smell urine. We're trying different things to try to make San Francisco smell nice and look beautiful. San Fran, which uh, CNN reported had the uh, this, this bad problem of uh, this urine problem, they got the idea from Germany. Those, can't, those Germans are pretty industrious. They have uh, you know a lot of partying going on in their city, 
in, uh, in Hamburg, and they, it says they can smell like a sewer each morning, so they organized the city's paint campaign. Now, San Francisco Public Works has received 375 requests to steam clean some of these uh, soaked walls since January, and so this uh, is punishable, public urination, by a 50 to $100 fine since 2002. I would think they could make some money off this and catch these people. But the fine has done little to curb the problem. Why, and these are walls now that sort of uh, spray back at you. And crews, crews have already painted 10 walls in San Francisco. And the Public Works intends to expand the program according to KPIX. I think they should spray paint on those that are graffiti guys as well. Spray blotches of paint. That's very hard to get off your body to anybody that wants to go ahead and uh, uh, defame walls and to paint them with uh, some kind of graffiti. Are you with me on that? Yeah, I'm not a big spray paint kind of guy. I, I still remember it as a child that you go to the hardware store and they would always have the spray cans locked up behind like that a... That was after they found out that it was like, you know, people were getting high off the spray paints and they had to lock them up. Were they getting high off of the spray yeah, paint or were they just they, damaging uh, no, they were getting high property? Off of you had to go as well. We used to, as a kids, we used to get spray paint, all these paint up model kits and all that kind of stuff. It was always good. Always wondered why my brother kind of walked around like in a daze. He must have painted that car his 15 times. I'm just kidding. It would have like a little metal ball. Wouldn't there be like yeah. a... Yeah, you you and it. you'd have to shake it until you heard that ball, and then you'd have to shake it for three minutes. My arm is still sore from that. You know, I sometimes wouldn't have a good first shake, and so you'd wait forever for that little ball to come loose in there. And I'd be lazy. I don't let it go for about a minute, and then i get big splotches of paint coming out of the thing. That was not good. You had to mix it up. Individuals and businesses with tax problems, listen carefully. Do you feel like you're losing control of your finances? If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, we can help you take back control. The IRS is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world, and they can seize your bank accounts, garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Take control of your tax problem now by calling the experts at U.S. Tax Shield and take advantage of the Fresh Start program and new law that may allow us to negotiate a settlement for the lowest amount possible. Our team of tax attorneys and enrolled agents can stop collections and get you protected so you can take control of your financial future. U.S. Tax Shield offers a price protection guaranteed quote to get you protected today. U.S. Tax Shield is A-plus rated with the Better Business Bureau, so call now, 800-351-8614. That's 800-351-8614. U.S. Tax Shield, 800-351-8614. Homeowners, now is the season to be thinking about your roof, because all it takes is one storm to turn a small roof problem into a major leak. If it's time for a new roof, call Sears at 888-465-9720. You can save $500 if you call right now. Sears licensed, fully insured contractors can get your roofing job done right. Just call 888-465-9720. Sears has a variety of shingles and styles that are built for long-lasting performance, and you'll save $500 if you call now. So call Sears for a free in-home consultation at 888-465-9720. Hurry, offer ends soon. Not available in all areas. Installation provided by Sears authorized licensed contractors. License information available upon request. That's Sears Roofing. Call right now and save $500. Call 888-465-9720. 888-465-9720. Call Sears now and get that roof repaired. Call 888-465-9720. It's the PM Show, nationwide, coast to coast, CRN Digital Talk Radio. Michael Horn along with Paul Stern. So, you know, last week, Paul Hogan was fired by the WWE, apparently using the N-word in a uh, scandal that erupted. Uh, he was uh, had some kind of a adult video shot or something with Bubba the Love Sponge's uh, uh, former wife or something, wasn't that it? And... Uh, he muttered something out to her or whatever, and it was a, a private conversation, but Hulk Hogan has apologized and said he shouldn't have used those words and whatever. It's like so many cameras going on these days. You have to watch everything you say. Anyway, all that being said, WWE gets rid of him, fires him. He says he resigned. They said that he was fired. Hulk Hogan's daughter, has uh, Brooke Hogan, has come out in defense uh, in an unusual way. She has uh, uh, busted out a poem for her father, really? Hulk Hogan. 
If you knew my father, you would know how hard he fought and the way it brought a smile to people, light, medium, and dark. It goes on and includes a religious reference in this, too. It says, The Lord says to forgive them, and don't be the one to stone, so please remember his strong arms when you were all alone. And then she closed with this. She says, My father has a daughter, and I have feelings, too, and if I knew your father, I would do the same for you. It's kind of touching. I, it makes me, it inspires me to write poetry again. I used to, you know, I think that I shall never see a thing as lovely as a Christmas tree. There once was a guy named Stern who went around wearing a fern. They turned on the light and it was much too bright and his glaring face was a stern. I just made that one up. These just come right out of the head like this. They just come out of the poems. Not to take Do you any, have one? No, no, not taking any, anything away from the, your presentation here on the program. Thank you. Thank you. The poetry corner. But um, I don't know if uh, Hulk Hogan's daughter necessarily did anything Brooke, to kind of co- compensate for the fact that her father went off and used terrible language that now has gone public and that's now offended people and it's embarrassed the whole – not only embarrassed the family, I would imagine. But, it, but he's an apologized. It was a private conversation between he and the woman and somehow it wasn't supposed to be released. Here's the problem I have. When there's something that's supposed to be released and then Hulk Hogan is suing – Whatever the, uh, what was the, what they released the video there, some dump website that just tries to make a name for itself. Like Gawker. Or it's one of those. Anyway, he's suing them and I hope he wins because they shouldn't allow that stuff to go out. You know, it's like it's personal crap and I'm sorry we don't need to see half that stuff. No, I, I would Where's agree. Where's the decency in a mark well, today? Well, I agree that it's, it's personal and it shouldn't come out, but now that it has, it, you can't take it back. By the way, I have Monica Lewinsky's dress. Bought it off eBay. I'm just I mean, kidding. I'm just I mean, Mike, if you do all the things that I've done in my lifetime to embarrass, I could embar- potentially embarrass the company. You'd be glad that I didn't talk about it. Also in the news, <laughs> I don't talk to Apple hate. Music is being investigated by attorneys <laughs> for their new streaming service. Uh, and uh, so it's reported that Apple Music is being investigated over its alleged anti-competitive business practices in music streaming in that market. Streaming services and record labels have been summoned by uh, the Attorney General of New York, Eric Schneiderman's office, and they're asking questions about Apple's Beats music, B-E-A-T-S, Beats music. Schneiderman is uh, probing major record labels along with uh, Apple, like Sony, Warner Music, Universal Music, about their contracts to license music on the streaming services. And according to a source, the Attorney General, Eric Schneiderman, is quoting now asking for documents relating to potential efforts by Apple to exclude or suppress competition at the music streaming industry. For example, our song that you and I did many years ago hasn't been streamed. The Mike and Paul theme, it's not there. Uh, The investigation is looking into whether Apple is coercing uh, labels to uh, take down services like Spotify and YouTube by restricting their ad-supported services or convincing the labels to raise the prices of their licenses. So there's some shenanigans going on, and there's another investigation going on. I have to see what's going on. A lot of shenanigans. Yeah. Uh, also, The View, uh, uh, Candace Cameron Bure, I believe it is, and uh, Paula Ferris might be joining The View as full-time co-hosts. Don't they change hosts of The View like every couple of months? I mean, come on. Back in the day, you know, Johnny Carson hosted the Tonight Show forever. Same with Jay Leno, did it for a long time. Dave Letterman. This view, these people, they just uh, switch all the time. Like musical chairs. Is it a boring show or something, The View? I mean, we've played sound bites before, am I right, Tomas, on this show? And they're all talking over each other. Can't hear anything. They used to do that on the show. Remember, Doug Steffen used to do that a lot on his program. He would actually play The View and as kind of being indicative of what the – the, the people of the, the, the United States are talking about. You couldn't understand because they were all talking at one time. It was kind of a little bit of a free-for-all. Anyway, they're saying it could be some heated uh, debates because uh, Candace Cameron Bure and uh, Paula Ferris are uh, in talks, I guess, to become permanent co-hosts on The View. And uh, one of the actresses was on, what, Fuller House? And then uh, and the, the GMA co-host weekend co-anchor, they're in final negotiations, and they might join. Can you believe this season nineteen uh, of the uh, the View? Whoopi Goldberg is still there. I understand she threatened to quit, didn't she? But so she brings some semblance of order. And uh, Raven Simone is there, and uh, Michelle Collins, 
and uh, they're on the show as well. But I think Whoopi Goldberg is the only one left. Well, Maybe she, that's where the ratings are, is only with Whoopi. No, Whoopi was recently taken out to the woodshed, wasn't she? For what? All that Bill Cosby stuff that she... Uh, well, she supported Bill Cosby and then, I guess, uh, didn't support him. Somebody but got Just it. like Larry Elder on his elder statement here that he was talking about, was mentioning that these people never brought charges against Cosby. Now they're coming out of the woodwork. Well, Please. That's true. You should have brought the charges when the the, the incident ar- arose. Am I right? No matter what you say, how terrible it is, my God, say something. Well, Don't I, just sit there in a stupor. I agree, but we're not in their, we're not in their shoes. Caitlyn Jenner is. I'm not going to. Oh, this is an odd. Thank you. There, we give it to you. All right, straight ahead, we continue here. It's the PM Show Monday edition. Michael Horn, Paul Stern on CRN. Experience a luxury boutique hotel escape in the heart of Laguna Beach, California. With the finest art gallery, shopping, dining, and nightlife just steps from your door. The heart of Laguna Beach, the edge of the sea. It's the Inn at Laguna Beach. Enjoy our comfortable rooms, blending the style of a timeless beach bungalow with the modern comforts of today. Seventy newly appointed guest rooms and suites await you at the Inn at Laguna Beach. Then, relax at the rooftop bar, where you'll indulge in breathtaking views of the ocean. For dining, you'll find libations and local cuisine on the California coastline, including dining at the legendary Las Brisas, a Southern California landmark. The Inn at Laguna Beach. Footsteps from room to village to sea, located in the heart of Laguna Beach. The Inn is within walking distance of all that Laguna Beach has to offer. No car required. The Inn at Laguna Beach, 211 North Coast Highway in Laguna Beach, California. Call 800-544-4479 or visit innatlagunabeach.com. Let me take just a moment or two, if I may, and talk about a great place to eat. That's right. For you folks anywhere in the eastern San Fernando Valley, drop in to Bob's Big Boys. That's right. In Sun Valley at 8274 Sunland Boulevard. Now, everybody remembers the name Bob's. They're getting bigger and bigger every day. And little old Bob carrying the hamburger in his checkered overalls is the same Bob that you remember from back through the years. And, of course, if you want to go in for a great lunch, remember their classic burger, the original double-deck hamburger combination. Delicious 100% pure ground beef in two patties with American cheese, lettuce, and our famous Big Boy special sauce. The name is Bob, and I think when you go in, you'll say, by golly, I'm sure glad that I found this restaurant because it's good for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. They've got all kinds of things, and all you have to do is remember. Bob's Big Boy in Sun Valley at 8274 Sunland Boulevard. It's a great place to eat. Trying to sell your old car? Instead, donate your vehicle to Heritage for the Blind. Pickup is free, and your donation is tax deductible. Just call one 800-785-9618. Heritage for the Blind accepts cars, vans, trucks, and boats, whether they run or not. Call right now and receive a free three-day vacation voucher to over 50 locations. Call 1-800-785-9618. Donate your car today. That's 1-800-785-9618. Hi, this is Fred Dreyer. Join me and Michael Horn on the PM Show Wednesdays at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern, here on CRN Digital Talk. We talk about things in the sports world nobody else does. So listen in to me and Mike at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern, right here on CRN Digital Talk. And go to crntalk.com for more information on other show times. And don't forget to take us with you by downloading the CRN app on the App Store. PM Show Monday edition, Michael Horn, Paul Stern. So I'm thinking on The View... Caitlyn Jenner should be brought on there. Instant ratings, don't you think? That would be a good idea. I'm declaring on this show, I'm going to have, I'm going to change myself to a dog. No, don't I mean, I pant a lot and get hot. You know, I like to lay on the floor. Like Bill Cosby to give me a chance, I'll curl up in your lap. I'm going to become, I'm going to a complete change to a dog. You know, let my fur grow out. You can let everything kind of hang, you know. I'm not too good at squatting, but I'll have to work on that. Angelina Jolie is coming to Netflix with her new film project. She has uh, got her next project. Her son uh, Maddox is going to be involved in this, too. Uh, it's an adaptation of uh, First They Killed My Father, A Daughter of Cambodia Remembers. So that'll be kind of interesting. There's a trailer out uh, for The X-Files, too. 
Getting you pumped up here. Uh, X-Files magic news. David Duchovny and uh, Gil- uh, Gillian Anderson are back. Gillian Anderson are back for the series. Mitch Poligi is coming back as uh, Skinner. He was the head guy. I love that. William B. Davis somehow is returning as the smoking man. Remember they had the smoking man? And uh, Joel McHale is joining the revival, too. And uh, the lone gunmen are returning. Remember, they always had, like, a special little lab there. They're, they're going to be back, too. This is great stuff. They're, uh, they're getting, uh, what, six episodes uh, and uh, starting January 24th. But this is going to be good. It's going to be on Fox. Uh, let's see. What else is happening, too? Uh, um, uh, Chris Pratt and uh, Bryce Dallas Howard are officially returning for a Jurassic World sequel. That's uh, news that we can talk about. Chris Brown apparently was held in the Philippines because uh, uh, they were holding him there. I- I- immigration officers in the Philippines wouldn't let him leave the country after his uh, performance on the 21st. And he's stuck in the country uh, with other scheduled con- uh, concerts there. So, uh uh, he didn't know what was going on. He doesn't know what's going on. And, uh, he, uh, sees, he apparently has to pay some money. A source close to the situation says he's leaving the country is not as difficult as it seems. He's got to pay some cash before he leaves Manila. Also coming up here in the news, Miranda Lambert. This is the story. Remember the voice I told you, uh, you know, that, uh, 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 uh Blake Shelton and Miranda, the split up. And I'm telling you, he had all those good singers. And then I watched him in concert and one of the female singers was up there on stage singing with him. And now this is what Miranda is claiming that, uh, uh, sh- cheating was not the only reason. She says he is, uh, way uh, more into the voice than her and she felt like an abandoned wife. Because he's into, he's really into the voice. He likes that show. Uh, and other sources say that uh, there was a constant source of conflict between them. Right. She says she uh, had to spend seven to eight months a year in Los Angeles, a place that she hates. She actually hates L.A. And uh, uh, sources say she would fly to L.A., see him sometimes just for a day. And Miranda claims he only reciprocated by coming to Oklahoma or wherever she was working. And so that's the problem. When you work yeah. in places and you're on tour, yeah, it doesn't no, work out. No no, no offense to, 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 to Blake Shelton, but what kind of a guy would choose the voice over Miranda Lambert? Apparently Blake Shelton. Anyway, apparently they're backing down on the cheating accusations, what they're saying. Bill Cosby in the news, you know, he got his quaaludes from a gynecologist. That's what some new documents oh, you gotta are released. Really... Kidding me? You got you, you can't you cannot be serious. Uh, uh, Lee, Leroy Amar, he could be a new character on our show. Could be our drug supplier doctor, here. On the, doctor Dr. Leroy Amar. <laughs> He's a controversial gynecologist. You think? Can you look it up on on Wikipedia? Is there a, is there a Doctor Lamar? It's just can... it's just Leroy Amar because eventually he had his the medical license <laughs> revoked after some botched plastic surgeries. <laughs> Anyway, I'm sorry for those of you that have the bot surgeries. Isn't that anyway. the one that the, the Kardashian is married to? I don't think I don't know. Isn't that the one? That Leroy the- Amar, I believe, was a, the utility player for the old Philadelphia Phillies. Played third base, I think, was his uh, position. And Britney Spears hasn't signed on to extend her Las Vegas residency yet. i, I got to go see that show. I, should we go take a trip to Vegas at Planet Hollywood? Uh, she hasn't made her decision where she's uh, going to be doing this uh, or not. So, um, also the X-Men director, uh, Brian Singer, is teasing a possibility of a Fantastic Four team-up. We'll have more stories on that later on in the week. Join us here Mondays and Fridays on the PM Show. Tomorrow, our buddy Larry Minetti, his lovely wife Nancy. Wednesday, if we can find him and get him in the studio where he's been seeing eating food with Ray Anthony at the Playboy Mansion. Fred Dreyer will be here, and of course, Robert Conrad Thursday. For Paul Stern, I'm Michael Horn. Have a good day. Enjoying all your favorite CRN programming is easier than ever. It's right on your TV, through your local cable provider, and on the web.